You say you were in the bathroom, but you have no alibi. Ha ha ha. There is a back door that only the female performers can use. Is that right, Mrs. Green? Oh, yes, she said. I think you're right. I stepped out at some point during the night. Mrs. Green, Green, Mrs. Green admitted, Sometimes a girl needs fresh air, but I could not have been gone long. I was in the billiards room most of the night. So Mrs. Green had no alibi at the time of Connor's death. I noted that and continued asking other questions. So we have motive, opportunity, means, um, I mean, Paul's gun is missing. Tiny Paul's gun is missing, and he says only somebody close to him could grab it. What are you implying, Miss Malone? She questioned. Just that anybody in the billiards room could have taken his gun, and you were close to Tiny Paul, so I'm sure he wouldn't mind if you had taken it, I concluded. She didn't like that conclusion, but it fit that she had access to the murder weapon. Oh, oh, oh. It's time to accuse! I thought of accusing Fanny Green of killing her husband. Accusing someone of murder was certain to agitate them. I knew it was not something I should do lightly. They... I knew it was not something I should do lightly. They would refuse any further casual chats. But if I was confident that she had killed Connor, including knowing the means, the motivation, and the opportunity for her to do so, then I knew I should accuse her. Time to do it. Fanny Green, I started boldly. You killed your husband. A stillness permeated the room as I spoke my words. I can prove your means, motivation, and opportunity for the murder. Fanny's face contorted, like I'd first seen her in Southern Coffee. She barked at me. What are you saying? I love my husband dearly. How dare you accuse me of murder? She huffed her way out of breath, which gave me a chance to prove it. The means? Access to Paul's gun. Tiny Paul's gun is missing, and he says only somebody close to him could, have, could grab it. What are you implying, Miss Malone? She questioned with a raised eyebrow. That you were close enough to Paul to take his gun. That xylophone. <laughs> well, or marimba? I don't know. She screamed until she was blue. Heh <laughs> heh. Because it's blue? Oh my lord. Oh. <laughs> so, my cat is having a real good time right behind me. She screamed until she was blue, but I didn't believe her denials. An affair could give her enough mo- an affair could give her enough motivation to kill her husband, and access to Paul's gun would give her the means. I had shown Mrs. Green that Paul's missing gun could have been the murder weapon. Considering her affair with Tiny Paul, she also would have the perfect motive to kill her husband. I just needed the, to prove that Mrs. Green had the opportunity for murder. Yes, we have that. Ella, yes. You admitted to being gone for parts of the night, I told her. That could have given you the perfect opportunity to murder your husband. She huffed at that for a while, but it stuck. It was clear now. I put it to her. Mrs. Green, you're the only one of my suspects with provable motive, means, and opportunity for murder. You know you had to leave your husband. You loved Paul, and as often happens, you began hating Connor because of it. So you tailed him to see what he was scheming. Maybe you could sink his plans and have the mob do your dirty work. Then, you met me. You learned your husband had been receiving death threats, and you knew that was your play. If he died, police would blame it on the underground. So late last night, after your singing, you called Connor to the tin spoon. You snuck out of the billiards room on uh you snuck out of the billiards room the back way, taking Paul's gun with you. That's when you shot him. 
She looked at me hotly, about to burst, but then she sighed and stared down at her feet. She began to cry. However many opiates were running through her blood, they had lost all their effectiveness. I put an arm around her as she wept. Kana had made my life miserable, she said between sobs. Look around this dump. That's how ruined I am and sad. Oh, that manipulative little sneak. You're right. I hated him. It's why I started going with Paul in the first place. She balked at my surprise. Oh no, I never loved Paul. I wanted him to kill Kana. But after learning about Ella, she trailed off. Oh, how could I convince Paul if he loved someone else? I had no way of leaving Kana. I slumped back to misery. What about a divorce? I offered. Divorce! She screamed the word back at me. Kana would never give me that. They say we're emancipated, sure, but we still need our husband's permission to leave his home. I was the only good thing that bum owned, and he would never let go of me. That's why I was chasing him yesterday, she continued. If I could prove infidelity, I'd demand a split in court. I got all excited when I saw you standing in your doorway. She started breathing more heavily. I had to follow you to make sure, but I was certain I had my way at my at, but I was certain I had my out. Only she sniffed. Only it happened you were above board. You're a detective, and I was still trapped. After we met, I came home to find Connor waiting for me. He said we'd be leaving for St. Louis. She took a gasp of air and continued, leaving everything I'd known for a place I'd never been with a man I didn't love. I couldn't do it, and I told him so. And then he struck me. She wiped away her tears, and with them came her blush and thick camouflage powder. A liver-colored spot the size of a silver dollar showed on her cheekbone. He just marched out the door, she continued through her waterworks, and I didn't know what to do. And then you thought of Paul- oh, and then you thought of Paul's gun, I concluded for her. That's right. Maybe Paul wouldn't kill Kana, but I knew he carried a cannon, and I knew I could get get to it. So you took Paul's gun and killed your husband, I said. No, she said. No, that was my plan, but... She broke off her sentence with a sniff and started another. I went to Paul's apartment late in the afternoon and grabbed his pistol. Then I came back here. I sat in this chair, petting my, the gun in my hand, wondering if I would do it. That's when he came in. Your husband? I offered. No, a much kinder man. Oh, he listened so well. I even told him about... She paused. About my plan. This other man, you knew him? She nodded a yes. He said he understood everything. He said he could frame the murder. He said not to worry. He took the gun. Was that stable? Oh, she cried. But I couldn't let him go through with it. You see, that's why I left the tin spoon last night to stop him. That was when I met Redstone Stable. In response to my raised eyebrow, she explained, I only met him last night. I had no idea that he had anything to do with my husband until this morning. The police told me at the station that Connor had suspected Stable. But I knew instantly that he was a terrible man. A woman's intuition never lies. Stable talks like a snake and has the looks to match. So you were both searching for the same So you were both searching for the same person last night? Yes, but he wasn't around. I think she sobbed. I'm tired of this, I said. Who is it? It's it's the owner of that hat, she said, pointing to it. It's Franklin. Whoa. Frankie? She continued slowly. Yes. He took the gun from me yesterday. I was too dazed to argue. Nice story, I said. But you still fit the bill just fine. 
Phyllis, even if I had the gun, how could I know where to plant it? I only met Stable last night, and I knew nothing about him. Franklin had known about the case from you, isn't that right? You're only telling me this to me now? What's the big idea stringing me along? Phyllis, she said softly. Franklin did this for me. He saved me. If that awful man, Stable, has to take the fall so that Franklin can stay free, well, she trailed off. I shook my head and looked at her. If she was telling the truth, Stable could confirm it. And if she was lying, I thought, what if she ran? Well, she would get stopped soon enough. Good looks can be a curse, and it, and it would be a cinch to snatch her. Besides, with all those opiate, with those opiates in her, she would have difficulty standing, let alone, alone running there anywhere. I gazed at her, and she understood what I was thinking. I'll be right here if you come back. I wondered why she would fabricate such a story if she knew she was stuck. Then I thought, what if it was the truth? I had to speak with Frankie. I hope she didn't kill him, because that's so... Like, if that story is true, that's really depressing. And I don't want to just send her to prison for doing what she can to escape an awful marriage. Uh, all my actions from those months moments blur together. I only remember the thoughts racing through my head. <laughs> we can only go to Southern Coffee. Oh, wait! Frankie! Holy shit! I'm sorry. I was thinking... Ray, the bassist. Frankie? You mean this guy? No. Whoa! No! Frankie, why? How could you? Frankie had been infatuated with Mrs. Green, and he could have gone to visit her. He could have taken the gun. He knew about Stable from when I'd told him of the case, and he could have planted it at, the, at his racetrack. Those facts might be explained away innocently, but it was the combination. Frankie was the only person with means, motivation, and opportunity to kill Green. Well, the second person, but, you know. I stepped out of the cab, hoping Frankie could give me another explanation for all of it. <laughs> what if he just ex tells a story that's gonna point her to someone else, and we're just gonna go through all the characters, and by the end I just have to pick who I think is guilty? <laughs> I walked down the creaking steps. That familiar basement smell added to the lump in my throat. I must, I must have spent some time looking around the place, inhaling it. Eventually, my eyes fell on Frankie. What is this? This looks different. Oh, well, never mind then. He gave me his generous smile that I knew well. I pulled out the hat and showed it to him. This hat belongs to you. I said in a flat tone. Frankie gaped. If I'd had any doubts, that look erased them. You killed Connor Green. Frankie's next sentence was short, delivered after a sigh. I always remembered it. I can't lie to you, he said. My jaw began to quiver, either from sadness or anger. It was hard to be sure. Why did you get wrapped up in this? Does that dimpled girl mean so much to you? Frankie shook his head. This'll be a long story, he started. I let him talk. As heated as I was, I had to know why Frankie would kill my client. Philly was the second time those bastards ruined my life. I ended for him. And when you discovered that Green was part of Egan's rats, you wouldn't let them ruin you a third time. Frankie laughed. No Malone, I could have run easy. My life here ain't much. I have nobody here, really. Except you. Sure, I could flee somewhere else, but it's you. Egan's rats won't leave an end loose. If Green had reached St. Louis, they'd have come back and tied you up. I can run from town to town, but I can't make you do that. I was the one who told you to take the case, remember? 
I had to stop them from hounding the rest. I had to stop them from hounding you the rest of your life. I stared at him without thought or emotion. He said, I did this for you. Poetic, Frankie, I countered. But this only proves you had no faith in me. Just like Green, who hired me because he thought I wouldn't see through his scheme, or his wife, who was hoping I would gum up the works for the police. You thought I couldn't hold my own. I'm just some flapper playing in a man's world, is that right? Frankie shrugged. I just wanted to protect you. I can protect myself, I told him. And without any murders, he sighed. I suppose I wouldn't blame you for taking me in. No, I won't fight if you want to drag me to the hall. But the police has stopped looking for a killer. If you let me, I'd keep running. It's up to you. No, I can't make decisions like this. Oh no. I'm, I'm gonna let him go. Oh wow, <laughs> that's it. Well, cool. What is with me and always playing these games with extremely sudden endings? It has some really beautiful music, which, you know, I'm a sucker for. And, uh, you know, just a very creative art style and the wow. animation. I really enjoy these kind of like Oh, yay, an ending. I enjoy, like, simple... Not simple, like, to undercut it, but, like, simple as a... You know, like, minimal. Minimalist. Yeah, that's the word. I like these kind of minimalist designs. Anyway. It was a few mornings later that I received a knock on my door. A small man in a light blue uniform asked me to sign for a package and handed me an envelope in a brown box. I opened the envelope. Inside were Frankie's scribbles, only slightly more legible than hieroglyphics. The writing was curt. Blow in the berg, it started. Too much baggage around to keep this act going. Went back to the missus for my hat. Spotted this. She agreed you should have it. Hope it serves you well. You're, you've become one hell of a detective. Good knowing you... The final two letters were obscured by a small, wet blotch on the page. Thanks for everything, Frankie. I put the note away, but not before a drop fell on the name Frankie, creating my own small, wet blotch. I turned to the box and removed one side of tape from the cardboard, then snapped the flaps open with a couple of loud pops. Rolled in a loose ball inside the box was Lewis's gray coat. I put it on and looked at myself in the mirror. I grabbed the lapels and pulled them tight. The trench coat suited me. I wondered how Green had first gotten hold of it. That innocent question was about to lead to a lot of trouble. What? Is, um, wow, is that just open-ended to kind of leave in my brain? And she kept on getting in trouble, solving dangerous cases, being a badass detective, or is it building up for a sequel? Either way, I'm, that's awesome. I love that. That's a really good game. I'm glad we played it. <laughs>